Welcome. Welcome to Community of Christ with the Shenandoah Congregation in San Antonio, Texas. Community of Christ is a welcoming and loving faith community. We proclaim Jesus Christ and promote communities of joy, hope, love, and peace. Please take a moment and like our video, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything, and comment to tell us where you are joining us from. Keep our contact details and share with us how we can minister to your needs. Find more information at www.cofchristsa.org. If you would like to view past services, follow this link on our website. We welcome you, we acknowledge you, and we love you. Shalom. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Shenandoah Congregation. We have a lot of them. We have the main uh, sanctuary here and all the congregations we got out at home. So welcome, everyone. Uh, today, we are having potluck. So after the service today, all are welcome to stay and feast and chat. Uh, what do you call it? Talk chat we do that very well so please everybody is welcome to stay anybody have a behavioral bingo anybody out there okay every once in a while we get a audrey god my goodness no uh just remember they are out there on the table and for everyone uh go out to our website and Richard has posted them all out there for us to have access to. Um, crafty ladies, June 11th. I think that's next, this Tuesday coming up, right? So ladies, if you would uh, like to join that group and then get involved with it, please do. They're, they they would welcome you, I'm sure. So. And the, like I said, I haven't I haven't indulged in the desserts here of late, but they've always been pretty good. So uh, if you'd like to get involved with that, please do. Uh, on the 15th, this is a Saturday at one o'clock, we come out and spruce up the building. Uh, kind of a mid-month, keep the building clean and nice. But then at two o'clock, we have game day. And it's a lot of fun. So if you'd like to come out and do both, one and two, and it usually runs a couple hours, the game day portion. Uh, it's a fun time. You can bring a little snacks and we share them amongst each other and those kinds of things. So it's a good fellowship time back in the, for, in the fellowship hall on Saturdays. Uh, June 22nd, which is rapidly uh, approaching us, we're having the celebration of the life of Jim Walker here in the sanctuary. So put that on your calendar. It's in our announcements. It's at 2 p.m. on Saturday. And Patty will be with us. And man, she's going to get so many hugs. She doesn't know how, know how to handle it. But we look forward to it, Patty, to have you here with us, okay? But please put that on your calendar. Um, camp Sea Needle Senior High Camp starts today. So uh, I know Articelli and, and Elise are heading that way as well. So uh, got lots of camps coming up. So if you haven't registered for the other camps yet, and you have those who want to attend, go to the announcements. Patty does a great job of putting it out there in the link. And then if you, so you can still register for the other camps as well. And reunions for that matter, right? Yeah, reunion one's coming up right after senior high camp. And then reunion two comes up uh, first, yeah, June 30th, first week of July. So if you want to register to go to the reunions, please do. Um, 
Let's see here. Do I have anything else? Am, am I forgetting anything? No? Well, welcome everyone, both at home and here in the sanctuary. Do you remember? Jesus loves us. And so do I. Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Recently, very recently, uh, Lyle and Bruce celebrated their 60th, 60th wedding anniversary. Let's get it. All right. And gosh, we have Terry and Lynn here. So take advantage of giving them lots of hugs. You never know when when Terry's going to be back from the road. And uh, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, after if there's nothing else, I can ask Kelly to come up and do our prayer concerns. Pray our prayer concerns this morning. Good morning. If you'll bow with me, please. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Parent, we come to you this morning to give you thanks and praise for all the many gifts you've given each of us. And as we just shared, our grateful news is that uh, Bruce, Bruce and Lila G are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. May they have many, many, many more. For our prayer concerns, Kathy, L, Kathy Lee V with some medical issues, Irma C dealing with some difficult life issues. We ask that you be with them and their care teams and their family and friends, comfort them and guide them as you see that they need. For our camps and reunions, it's travel season. Be with all those coming and going have them arrive safely, participate and have fun, and return home safely. For all those experiencing weather hardships, wrap them in your loving arms and keep them positive and uplifted during these difficult times. And for those that don't feel they're worthy of your love and concern, spread your love all over them, for we are all children of God. And may we carry and share your peace with us every day. In your son's most holy name, we pray these. Amen. Into my heart, into my heart, come in. Into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart. Good morning, everyone. 
We're going to start our service today with a gathering hymn. Um, we're going to sing, Come and Find the Quiet Center. This is number 15 in your hymnal. Please remain seated while we sing this hymn together. start with an apology that was a typo in my script that was not him 15 that was him 151 <laughs> i hope that's the only typo i have um so if you are uh, joining us from home and you happen to have a hymnal in front of you maybe you flipped to 15 i'm like that's not what we're singing so i apologize for that <laughs> but uh welcome welcome in the name of jesus christ who taught us how to live a full life. My name is Kathleen Cole, and I'm presiding over our service here today at the Shenandoah uh, Congregation of Community of Christ in San Antonio, Texas. We are a welcoming church, and you are welcome here today, whether that be in person, uh, via Zoom, or at a later time on our YouTube channel. Whoever you are and wherever you are, we are glad that you are here with us. Um, I would like to acknowledge uh, the folks that are uh, contributing to our service today. Our, our uh, message is being brought by Kanani Clark. We're having um, a Disciples Generous Response brought by Jenna Bowles. And we are gonna have a prayer for peace by Audrey Cole. We're going to have a call to worship by Daniel Gomez. And uh, as always, we have our fantastic team of technicians. We've got John and Miranda here in the sanctuary today. 
um, Richard and Jim contribute. Patty always contributes so much. Um, we have our lovely worship service by Marilyn McCrimmon. I hope I'm not leaving anybody out. Uh, so thank you all um, for your willingness to serve. And um, I just want to call your attention to the fact that our theme today is renewing the inner life. Jesus often spent time alone in prayer. And we too, with life so full of activities, we need to take time and make a conscious effort to step aside and connect with God and seek to renew our inner spirit. At this time, I'm going to invite Daniel to come up and uh, call us all to worship with words adapted from the first eight verses of Psalm 138. Right. Right there. Awesome. Right there. Hey, oh, yeah. We give thanks, O Lord, with our whole hearts. We give thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness. On the day we call you, answer us, you increase our strength of soul. Your steadfast love, O Lord, enders forever. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Daniel. All right. I, I now invite you to stand. We're going to stand and we're going to sing our opening hymn, Speak, O Lord. And I hope I don't have another typo. I think it's number 66. All right. Hymn 66. And then please remain standing afterwards for the prayer of invocation.
pray with me. Heavenly creator, we bask in your glory. We give thanks for everything that you have created, everyone that you have created. And we come with a spirit of humility today and a spirit of yearning. We yearn to be close to you. We yearn to emulate you. We yearn to learn from your son and the example of his way. We ask that you be with all gathered today. Open our eyes, our hearts, our minds to the message that you have prepared for Kanani to give to us. And we thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Our focus moment today will be, surprise, a musical one. <laughs> um, we will listen to a wonderful recording of one of our hymns. It's called Listen in the Silence. This was recorded in September of 2020 during a period of pandemic lockdown by a young woman who is named Brianna Frank. Uh, we, at that time, we were all forced to turn inward, were we not? Um, and some of us really suffered, some of us persevered, and some of us thrived. Everyone had different experiences. And what happened I don't know what happened with Brianna. I can't speak for her, but I can tell you that a thing of beauty came out of that experience for her. And I wanted to share it with you here today. So I invite you to become settled, comfortable, and quiet. And uh, I ask that you allow this recording to wash over you and to renew your spirit. Listen in the silence, listen in the noise, listen for the sound of the Spirit's voice. Listen in the silence. Listen in the noise, listen for the sound of the Spirit's voice. Listen, listen in the silence, listen. Sound of the 
Our scripture reading comes from Doctrine and Covenants 163, 3a and b. You are called to create pathways in the world for peace in Christ to be relationally and culturally incarnate. The hope of Zion is realized when the vision of Christ is embodied in communities of generosity, justice, and peacefulness. Above all else, strive to be faithful to Christ's vision of the peaceable kingdom of God on earth. Courageously challenge cultural, political, and religious trends that are contrary to the reconciling and restoring purposes of God. Pursue peace. Will you please pray with me? O oh God of peace and mercy, we pray day by day for peace in our world. We give you thanks for each new day. When we do not live, when we do not live peace, grant us mercy. When we cry out in our despair, grant us peace. When we harden our hearts, grant us kindness. Help us to pursue peace for all of creation. Amen. And now I would invite you to remain seated as we sing 162, hymn 162, Meet Me in a Holy Place. Easy, right? 
Aloha, everyone. I'm so glad to be here this morning to share uh, the gospel message with you. It wasn't easy. Uh, it wasn't an easy life uh, living, leaving Hawaii because I love that place so much. When I was young, it was assumed by my parents that you have to go to church. Instead of going to practice for sports, going to the dojo and working out with all our, our yeah, watch out, walk. My heart was over there, but my mind was here in church because our church that I grew up in actually met at a YMCA. But it was a meeting place, a place of comfort, a place of learning. So our church which had a long name before. I like the community of Christ's name. Shortens up, it, it has a lot of meaning. Uh, not that the other name didn't have a lot of meaning. But as long as I can remember, the, the church and our ohana actually went together. When we were a church, we were with ohana. When you're with your ohana, the church follows you. It was our kuleana. Kuleana means responsibility. It is the Hawaiian word for responsibility. We were responsible. After practice, you're going to go to Wednesday night service. If you did work out on your own, play ukulele and music. On Sundays, you still had to make it to evening service. It was our kuleana to go to reunions, be with your ohana, being with the church. It all went together. We would meet uncles and aunts and cousins. So you're all related, just like we are in the community of Christ. Hey, uncle, you just meet somebody and, hey, cuz. Hey, sister, hey, brother. This was all part of the culture, the Hawaiian culture, the church culture, because we are all are in the family of God. We would meet the kupuna. Kupuna are those wise, elderly people that sit in a congregation and when you ask them a question about culture or church, they would say, sit down and I'll explain it to you. And some of them like to talk for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of aloha. One of the definitions of aloha is love. A lot of love. A lot of love. That love surrounded everyone and engulfed you. It smothered you. I had one aunt, she had to be about 6'3", a big Hawaiian Samoan lady. My brothers, those of you that know Kawila and, and Dewey, Look out, she's coming. <laughs> about six three, about 300 something pounds coming right at you and she's gonna hug you. <laughs> oh my goodness. And she would take you in her arms and pull you there. And of course, when we got bigger, we couldn't embrace her anymore that way because she would hold your face right against her bosom. 
Sometimes I couldn't breathe like that. But that was love. That was love. It smothered you. And that's what we look forward to. Because that is the Zionic condition. We experience the Zionic condition right here this morning. Not because I'm speaking, but because we congregate in the name of the Lord. We praise Him. Of course, we'll have food. I look forward to that, too. Ah, I brought the Hawaiian sweet bread, so there's a lot of it. Just like we did back in Hawaii. I want you today to reflect on your upbringing, wherever it was, Missouri, Texas, we don't care. And the good things that happened to you, I want you to think about that, that built your strong moral character and still building that character that led you to church today. See, by you coming to church today, you're sharing yourself with the rest of us. As I look to the young men, two good-looking young men over here, thank you for coming to church. Good luck at Chaff Band. And good luck to you in your sports. But you're sharing yourself with us as we share the Zionic condition with you. Remember all those that helped you along the way, even today. Those that have influenced your life and instilled in you and molded you to what you are today. You are a big influence on the people that you associate with once you leave this place. The importance of having Jesus in your life and having the Holy Spirit in your life places a kuleana or responsibility on you to express that to those that are in school, those in your community, those on your team, those in the band, those in your family. Thank the Almighty for placing those people in your life that you might taste the Zionic condition. The condition in which God himself prepares for us that we might live as Ohana. Our theme today is renew the inner life. And if we go to the scriptures and look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, and it's a short verse, and I'll read it for you. I know some of you have read it already because you looked at the program uh, way before I did. I know you did. <laughs> it says, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, this is Paul speaking, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe. Therefore, we speak. What is the spirit of faith? I started to think, what is the spirit of faith? Oh, what is Paul talking about? Nearly 2,000 years ago. But if you go to the previous scripture, it says, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in us. And that's what it means. We were reflecting Christ's life in our own life, because Christ's life is like God's life. 
So this is what Paul was trying to teach the Corinthians when they had many different gods, churches, churches. Uh, they had many different leaders. They had different governments. They were all into sin and all these orgies and stuff. But it was Paul's kuleana responsibility to adjust their thinking and change their paradigm so that they would know that there is God in heaven. In the last few weeks, Paul had laid the foundation for a humble ministry. And he had to approach it that way. The extension of Christ's light and strength. He had to express faith as a victory over difficulties and afflictions of that day. Many were under, in, under bondage so that they could not freely express themselves because someone was watching over them. Paul presents eternal life as a supreme reward for the people. Don't look at just this life, but look beyond. And that came with faithful service from those that were committed to Christ. So as they went through a number of preachers, they would... Uh, bring a preconceived notion of eternal life, um, you know, within the topic, interfering with what we would understand today as a text. I will try to approach this passage with openness and some curiosity. Paul actually begins his ministry there, reflecting on David. The psalmist. So if we look in Psalms 116, verse 10. The psalmist says, I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Even when facing death, the psalmist trusted in God, a condition familiar to Paul. Because Paul was on a run too. Not everybody loved him. Paul's statement, I believe and so I spoke, unites what David was trying to say. The act of keeping your faith. Everyone has faith. There are levels or degrees of faith that we have. But the whole concept reinforces the idea of determination and strength. How strong am I? Can I make it? Can, can I make it through the hot days here in Texas? Can I make it because there's someone pressuring me to do things that I don't want to do? Paul reminds the Corinthians that they were already introduced to faith and they had that faith. All they had to do now was to act in actual circumstance. A note here. Belief as part of your faith in the resurrection provides a basis for strength and determination in life's difficulties. We're all going to have difficulties. Sometimes my leg doesn't work right. You know, I have to twist and turn and make sure that it's okay. Sometimes I don't feel well. We all go through that. We all have a set of challenges in our life. It gives us hope for eternal life and witness to others how powerful and transforming God's love is and understanding the gospel of Christ. Faith results in proclamation. What does that mean? Faith results in proclamation. 
you remember anything from today of what I've said, remember this. You cannot be both Christian and silent. You cannot. <laughs> You cannot be both Christian and silent. You have to proclaim to the world, even to your family, to trust in God and to believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. I'm grateful to my Heavenly Father. I am grateful for my father. He was a confident kind of person, very quiet, very determined, good teacher, trainer. He loved his sports, and we did too. When I was 11 years old, Family went to Haleiwa. We like Haleiwa. Matsumoro shave ices in Haleiwa, Hawaii. One of the most popular places in the world. If you haven't been to Matsumoro's uh, shave ice, you are missing something. And we would go and have a picnic and we would run and we would uh, have food and we just enjoy it. And we would do that a couple times a month. Uh, usually the other couple <clears throat> weekends, we were doing luau's, working the luau's, fixing the pig in the ground and, and getting it ready for the, for the feast. My dad cautioned me. He said, son, and he wanted the two others too. But I, I think I was the more adventurous one uh, of the three boys. And the girls were little enough, they, they didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I had an inner tube that I was uh, hanging on to, and I was trying to get around the rocks in Haleiwa Beach. But I found myself drifting out to sea. And the more I paddled with one hand, it wouldn't work. So I hooked my leg on the, the inner tube, you know, just a tire inner tube, with both hands trying to uh, get back to shore by the rocks. I was looking for hei. Hei is the word for uh, 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 octopus. And it's a delicacy, even today. But I drifted farther out. And as I tried to work that, the inner tube left me. I was stranded out there. I drift farther out to sea. And I paddled with all my might. I got caught in an undercurrent. The current pulled me down. And all I could think of was to get back so I could breathe, get back to the surface. I was fighting for my life. When I surfaced, I was exhausted. I went down again. It pulled me under to the undertow. Undertow is a cross current, which is much deeper than that on the surface of the water. I was too weak to fight. Came up again for the second time. And as I looked up, I could see my father swimming, trying to get to me. I went under again. 
this time so exhausted, so weak. I could not fight anymore for my life. Do you know what it feels like to be defeated and being weak and overwhelmed that you cannot breathe anymore and you cannot move? At age 11, I felt that hand grab me by the hair. I'm glad I had hair. I used to have a lot more hair and longer too growing up in Hawaii. And he pulled me up out of the water and he took me back to shore. He didn't yell at me and say, what did I tell you about the currents? He didn't do that. He said, are you all right? And I said, yeah, Halia, hi, come. My great granddaughter. My father saved me that day, and I'm so grateful. Had he not saved me, Halia would not be here this morning. <laughs> My children wouldn't be here. I was so grateful to my father for being a, such a good athlete that swam out there. I don't know how far it was, but everybody on the beach looked little as he pulled me back in. I cannot be silent. You cannot be Christian and silent. I'm grateful to be here, just like I said earlier when I started to speak. I'm grateful to being here and standing in front of you to share my testimony with you. Paul says, do not lose heart. Do not be discouraged because there's so many bad things going to happen in your life. Despair and discouragement has no place in the life of a disciple. Afflictions actually prepares us to become stronger. When we overcome some of those barriers or those things that would discourage us and past that point, we become a stronger person. Why? because that's our inner person. That is where his Holy Spirit blesses us. Just as we speak of a waiting, uh, the weight of glory beyond all things that Paul spoke of, that weighty thing he actually refers to as a load. In verse 17, it is a load. And he says, us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all. There is a load of glory for us that awaits us. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, Paul told the Corinthians, God's spirit transforms believers. He can be this way one day. And he transforms us to become this. It's a step-by-step -step increase on being in the likeness of Christ. That was the message that Paul had for the Corinthians. From one degree of glory to another. Eternal glory, according to Paul, has nothing to do with how we perceive the restoration thought of the three glories. It doesn't mean that we exalt a, such a position with power and achievement. 
What Paul says is that glory refers to the unity of the crucifixion and the resurrection. That's what the glory is that we are going to experience also. He suggests that suggests uh, that success actually comes with the renewal of our inner nature. And that's what our theme is about today. The renewal of our inner nature into the likeness of Christ. And the likeness of Christ is also the likeness of God. What is your inner nature like? I ask the question to myself. Does it take the form of the likeness of Christ? I think yes. Not only for me, but all of us that are here today and those that are in the Zoom. Paul says suffering and service results in a new life through Christ's eternal glory. Beyond measure is the mystery. Is the mystery of the resurrected life in the presence of the Lord. Paul is saying, if we understand and see eternal life, is a goal that should direct our lives. In closing, the Apostle Paul's message to the Corinthians and to us today is trust in God. Even setbacks and disappointments cannot destroy our anticipation of eternal life with our creator. Paul refers to the unity of the crucifixion and resurrection as part of the life of Christ. Eternal glory is a mystery because we haven't experienced the death and the resurrected life as Christ did. In essence, sharing your testimony of God's healing power and influence on your life, do not be discouraged, but to share. God is present in each one of our lives. Thank you for your message, Kanani. As we begin to prepare for our disciples' generous response, I'm going to ask that we sing together a hymn of generosity, From You I Receive. This is number 611. Uh, please remain seated for the singing of this hymn. We have been focusing on the inner life today, but we are blessed to be a blessing. We are called to give thanks for the blessings we have received, 
then look beyond ourselves and share with others. Our hymn just put it very well. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, by this we live. This is your opportunity to do just that. From 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We have so many ways to be a blessing to others. Time, talent, and treasure. I invite you to give to your true capacity. After I offer a blessing, Audrey and Richard will receive your gifts. Could you all come up for the plate? Dear Heavenly Parent, we have so much gratitude for all the blessings that have been passed to us in this life. Sometimes we forget how truly lucky we are. We ask that these gifts received today are passed on to bless others in the best possible way. In your holy name, amen. For our closing hymn of blessing, I ask you to stand again while we sing number 660. Uh, this is Buana Awa Bariki. May God grant you a blessing. And I also invite you to remain standing after this hymn for our closing prayer of blessing. Maybe this brings back some memories of youth choir we had some pretty in, uh, enthusiastic youth a few years ago singing this one. Gracious God, bless us in our walk as a people of faith. Allow us to see your pathways with trusting eyes and renewed hearts. Give us courage to keep from the fear of change and resistance to transformation. Live in us and give us strength to change those habits and customs that are not pleasing to you. For only by drawing closer to you can we change and renew our lives for your purposes of peace, your shalom. May our spiritual renewal deepen our relationship with you, with other people, and with creation. We pray a blessing of peace 
upon this people. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Go in 